The big game is right around the corner and these chicken tenders are guaranteed to win over your friends and family. They are soaked in buttermilk and pickle juice and fried to perfection, guaranteed to give you that crackly, beautiful crust that you can hear when you bite into them, even left over. We're serving these alongside some of my favorite dipping sauces and I just know you're gonna love them, so let's jump right into this. All right guys, I know we're all rooting for the same team here. Go birds. Or maybe not, not everyone likes us, but you will like or love these crispy, crunchy chicken tenders. They are just so delicious. Whenever I make a batch of these, my kids go crazy for them. Even leftover cold packed for their school lunches, they still provide that crispy, crunchy, loud, crackly bite when bitten into. So I'm gonna show you the secret to get in just that. I've got 12 jumbo chicken tenders ready to go. I removed the tendons from these. With only a few ingredients, these are gonna marinate overnight and become so tender. Into a large bowl, I have one cup of butter buttermilk. I'll add two thirds cup dill pickle juice. We'll add one heaping teaspoon of each garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and cayenne pepper. Give that a quick mix and then get all of your chicken tenders into this bath and let them soak in here overnight. Now once it's time to start cooking these, I remove the bowl from the refrigerator 30 to 45 minutes prior. This way they can sit at room temperature for even cooking. I've added three cups of all-purpose flour into a throwaway tin. This gives me enough room to work with my chicken. We'll season it up with some paprika, cayenne pepper, more onion and garlic powder, and some black pepper. Give that a mix just to incorporate those ingredients together. Now, the secret to getting that crackly, crispy, crunchy texture. You'll want to either use water or buttermilk is preferred if you have some left over. So we'll go with that. Slowly drizzle in a few tablespoons at a time, giving that a mix to create some nice clumps throughout our flour mixture. You're looking to achieve those small clumps that you would normally see on the outside of a nice crispy chicken tender. Remember, you can always add more buttermilk if you do run out of some, so don't go overboard with it. Once your flour mixture is ready, then you can start battering up your chicken tenders. One by one, removing them, allowing a little of that excess buttermilk to drip off, not all of it, and then straight into our flour mixture. Using your hands or a spoon, anything that you can to really pack on that flour and those flour clumps that we've created. And repeat the process until all of your chicken tenders are nice and coated. We'll allow these to sit for about five to 10 minutes while our oil comes up to temperature. You can use any oil that you like. I have a mixture of vegetable and peanut because it's just what I have on hand. And I'm using a pot on the Blackstone side burner. If you don't have the side burner and you still wanna use your Blackstone, you can add a pot directly on your griddle surface. Some even like to add oil to these aluminum throwaway tin trays. Just be very careful if doing so. A pot is definitely gonna be much sturdier and safer. You're looking for your oil to come up to about 350 degrees and then you can start deep frying. Working in small batches, gently lowering your chicken tender into the hot oil, using your Blackstone Instant Read to make sure that your temperature stays at around 350. If your chicken batter is getting too dark too fast, then your oil is too hot, you'll wanna drop down that temperature. In total, these should take about three minutes per side, so give them a little flip over halfway through. I've got my expandable Blackstone cooling rack set up on my griddle, waiting for these chicken tenders to get done. As soon as they come out of that hot oil, I love instantly sprinkling over the top some Malden flaky sea salt. This stuff is not only so delicious, it just adds so much flavor. I love the way that it looks on top of these chicken tenders. And within minutes, I've got a platter full of these crispy, crunchy, beautiful chicken tenders ready to dive into. So we've got to get onto my favorite part, the dipping sauces. I love having a variety of options for dipping these chicken tenders into. For my first sauce, I picked up my favorite store-bought buffalo sauce. It's so easy to judge up any store-bought sauce by adding your favorite ingredients or flavors to it. If there's anybody out there that could judge up a store-bought sauce, 
It's gotta be Aaron and Steven Priestley, also known as the Blackstone Bros. These two always blow me away with their homemade sauces and all of the things that they cook and share the ideas, the recipes for you guys. So be sure to be following them. Now let's see, Aaron and Steven, how would you zhuzh up a store-bought buffalo sauce? Thanks for that, Betty. Whether you're making chicken wings or better yet, Blackstone Betty's Chicken Tenders. We're gonna show you a couple recipes of ours. We do love making our sauces homemade, sometimes out of convenience and time. It's just better to doctor up in that store box. Absolutely. Yeah, so we got uh, two different sauces here. Let's talk about the first one. Yeah, the first sauce is gonna be uh, just a little Frank's uh, Red Hot Buffalo Wing Sauce, a package of ranch seasoning and some melted butter. And the second seasoning, we got Parmesan Garlic Seasoning. We're gonna match up with some Parmesan Ranch. And uh, why not grate some fresh Parmesan into the sauce and out with a little bit of sour cream. They both sound heavenly. For my second sauce, let's throw it back to one of my favorites, Betty's Burger Sauce. This one can be found in my Smash Burger video recipe. This is a simple sauce with everything you love on a cheeseburger. Mayo, ketchup, mustard, pickle juice, fresh onion and pickle, a little of the Worcestershire sauce, paprika, salt and pepper, so simple and fast. And then another favorite, my white barbecue sauce. This from my Greek chicken party platter. This stuff I used to sell to my friends and family. It is so addictingly good. Some mayo, white wine vinegar, fresh garlic, tons of black pepper, salt and sugar, and a little kiss of fresh lemon juice. This one, along with those chicken bites that I bring for family parties, everyone goes crazy over. Now for probably my absolute favorite sauce. This is my hot honey maple syrup from my French toast and scrapple video. You will be licking your fingers and bowl and plate and everything clean. Nene, I know you're watching and you know you did it too. It is so good with a little bit of Texas peat hot sauce, some melted butter, pure maple syrup, some local honey, and a pinch of some fat kosher salt. You guys can just thank me later for that one. And last but not least from my Cuban video, this is my honey mustard. So simple, mayo, honey, mustard, and just a little bit of lemon. This has to be the second runner up for me for these chicken tenders. I cannot wait to see who is making these chicken tenders and enjoying these just as much as I do. When you do, be sure to let me know down below which one is your favorite. Now, go enjoy the big game and be sure that you're following the entire Blackstone Network. Now, I hope you guys enjoy the big game and these chicken tenders are a part of your game day with your family and friends. Be sure to check out all of my friends and their game day recipes for you guys within the Blackstone Network. And until next time, I'm Blackstone Betty. Go birds!